everyone. Of course you know I'm John Doe, and of course you know I live in Tokyo. And we're going to try to do another edition of the da 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 Ghost Riders Report. Now, by now, everyone's pretty aware that uh, the DPRK, otherwise known as North Korea, launched a ICBM, a battle warhead, in it, of course, into the Sea of Japan or Sea of China. That does depend on what country you live in. Trust me. And this has called a, caused a big international stir. Many countries upset about it. The Japanese government making a big stink about it. America having a shit fit. You know, and various other countries freaking out. And then you have the average person wondering, why are they so evil? Why are they threatening other countries so much? Why do they make these nukes? Why do they got to be so aggressive and bad? Well, I think it's pretty easy to answer that question. It comes down, simply put, that if you have nuclear weapons, America doesn't invade you. And one country right now who definitely needs some protection from U.S. invasion is the DPRK. It seems like from its inception, America's had it in for North Korea. Everything they could possibly do to, to uh, sabotage this country, try to undermine this country's leadership, and ultimately try to make it collapse. America's tried. All short of invasion. Full on invasion. Excuse me. Coffee. You know how it is. But now, it's pretty clear that invasion would be pretty stupid from America's perspective. Because America really is really, really scared of full-on nuclear war. America wants to always have the threat of nuclear war. They want to be able to make that threat as the ultimate threat. But when someone else can make that threat back at them and mean it and actually have the capacity to do it, America gets quite scared. You know, America doesn't want to push that envelope. Because they know what it could lead to. You know, a full-on nuclear war wouldn't last very long. Because all it takes is one country to fire one, another country to fire one back, then you have a nuclear war going on. And of course, you have all these other nations have nuclear warheads. And they could possibly freak out and fire theirs. And the whole world could be over rather quickly. And the United States is pretty clear that they're aware of this. They know. They know that, that any country that has nuclear warheads, you don't want to mess with them too much. Now, does that mean America is going to lift any sanctions against North Korea? No. Does that mean suddenly America is going to start any type of troop withdrawal of the DMZ? No. Does that mean America is actually going to try to work out a deal with North Korea? No. It doesn't promise any of that. The only thing it does guarantee is America will not invade the DPRK. Won't even try it. They'll try everything else, but they won't do that now. Because for years it's been suspected that North Korea has nuclear technology, they've been uh, testing weapons and things. But now they can put a payload and send it up, and it can make it to countries pretty far away from North Korea. So that really changes the game now. And it will be interesting to see if when and how America changes the way it deals with the DPRK and, and America's lapdogs, especially Japan. What, what's America going to do in the, in the relationship with Japan now? All of this will be inter interesting. But I want to hear what you guys think about this unfortunate international situation to where the only way you can protect your country from U.S. invasion is have nuclear weapons. So I want to hear you guys think about this. Now you notice in the last video I posed a bonus question and that question was who brought nuclear power to Japan? It's very interesting the person actually behind bringing nuclear power to Japan. His name is Matsutaro Shoriki. Now this guy is quite interesting. He was a media mogul basically, right? Uh, he brought uh, he owned the Omori Shimbom. It's one of still today one of Japan's largest newspapers. 
Uh, he was also founded Japan's first commercial television station, the Nippon Television News Network, uh, NTN. I don't know if it what it's called now. He was also re elected the House of Representatives. Appointed to the House of Peers is kind of like the upper house. In American terms, you would call like senators. And he was also a very successful judo master, reaching an extremely rare rank of 10th Dan. Now, you would think it, just from that, this guy's some type of badass. Well, you can stop admiring him right now. Alright? Now, here's what he did. And also, by the way, he's a founder of modern Japanese baseball. Is the way he brought baseball to Japan, too. Look at that. But then you can stop admiring the gentleman. He has a bit of controversy, right? He was actually a Class A war criminal after the Second World War. He served 21 months in prison. However, in 1947, he was let out of jail after it was determined that most of his crimes were ideological and political in nature so they claimed he was a political prisoner and somehow that worked and he got out and here's where it comes to the fact that how he brought nuclear power to Japan in January 1956 he was named chairman of a, at the time newly created Japanese Atomic Energy Commission in May of that year he was appointed head of the brand new science and technology agency under the cabinet of Prime Minister Ichiro Hatoyama. He had very strong support behind the scenes from the U.S. intelligence agency. Yes, the CIA. So he was working with the CIA to bring nuclear power to Japan. That's just really fucking rich. You know. But I thought you guys would find it interesting to learn about who actually brought nuclear power to Japan and what type of human being you're dealing with. Right? So then, that's just a little bonus there. Now, on the regular part of the video, you'll see the other bonus question for next video. And depending how this goes, we'll try to do more stuff like this and see how, and see how much you guys like this. So until next time, John Doe in Tokyo, I'm out.